Wake up or go to sleep, everybody. Early birds and late birds. John Hammond keeping me company here. Hammond report. It's this John next Hammond. Thing is a track I've always dug. The organ, organ player. player, the guitarist of Hee Haw fame, and accordionist. Did on the Capitol label. Here he is doing St. Louis Blues on 1550 AM. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, folks, for joining me once again for some more music and stories on November 25th, 2020, a day before Thanksgiving. And I got a doozy for you today. You're hearing Roy Clark there, the great... The late grade Roy Clark. We lost him on this month in November, just two years ago. And I played him on my radio show. And I had the great honor and privilege of interviewing him just before he received the American Eagle Award in Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to revisit that right now. I want to wish everybody have a beautiful and safe Thanksgiving. If you haven't traveled to your Thanksgiving gathering, don't do it, folks. Stay home and enjoy some of my Hammond reports. And next year, we can all get back out on the old dusty trail. All right, let's go and meet and talk with Roy Clark. Here we go now. Hi, Roy. Beautiful blue shirt. Yes. Yeah. My name is John Hammond. But it's J-O-N, no H, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a big honor to meet you. It is mine. Thank you. Uh, uh, you're a big hero of mine for a long, long time, you know. Well, thank you. And I'm a musician myself, you know. And uh, I, I've been doing this cable TV show for 34 years. Really? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I don't know that I've had one for 34 years. Somebody's doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on in Manhattan, you know, so I know that you, oh, you yeah. did the, the Tonight Shows that you did were in Manhattan, were they at the Rockefeller Center at NBC? Yes, sir, it sure was. It sure was. Wow. That's back in uh, 1905 when <laughs> it was before Johnny, K, uh, Johnny Carson took over. Uh-huh. And that's when... Um, oh, the one that had the falling out with NBC. Um, oh yes, uh, uh, Jack. Um, yeah, Parr. Jack Parr, right? Yeah, yeah. When they, when he left, there was a oh, what six weeks or something that they laid it over until to break that image, uh, uh, give Carson a chance, mm-hmm. and uh, that's when I fell in. Jimmy Dean got me on. He was guest hosting. Jimmy's the man. He's the man. Right. And so I heard one story that uh, he asked you if you could do the show, and you were pretty far away. You had to fly with a couple of different connections and uh, get in there, go right directly to the studio, right? We left uh, Safford, Arizona. For, well, in fact, uh, Jimmy called on Thursday and said he had been trying to get a hold of me for a week and uh, said he wanted to have me on The Tonight Show, but tomorrow, he said tomorrow's my last day and we said well see if I can if they'll let me on if I get there so I was in Safford Arizona so I got on a a little private airplane flew down to Tucson from Tucson to Chicago Chicago to New York New York and then retraced it back to uh, Safford Arizona and when I you would have thought that a major catastrophe had happened because when we uh, were driving back into Saf- uh, Safford, about 10 miles out, the uh, cars back up, bumper to bumper, and we looked at one another, the pilot, and I was thinking, what, what's happening here? He said, I have no idea, it's just starting. Closer we got to come and find out, they had seen the show the night before and was there, we had to do three shows that night wow. in Safford uh-huh. after that trip to New York overnight. Wow, Yeah. beautiful. And Jimmy Dean said, uh, 
didn't see him till right before showtime. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, uh, how many tunes they got you down for? I said, well, they said uh, maybe two, and, uh, and then maybe one with you, do a tune together. And um, he said, because he said, we'll just keep doing it till we get it right. When you leave here tonight, you're going to be tall hog at the trough. All right. In other words, if two songs don't get it, we'll do two more. God bless Jimmy Dean. That's it. That's right. And do you remember who the band leader was? Uh, sure. It was a, uh, uh, oh, Lord, he was there before, stayed for a while after. I can see his face. Well, we can look. We can look it up. You know? Yeah, I'd like to hear it again yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I really uh, love uh, some of the guitars that you play. I play. A I'm an organ player and accordion. You know? Ah, okay. But I play a little bit of guitar. So, uh, since I'm a teenager, I had a, a Gibson Birdland with I, the Florentine cutaway, just like yours. You I know? have it downstairs now. You got the Birdland there? Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, I got that Birdland because I saw you play it on television. You know, I said, that's the most beautiful guitar I ever saw, you know. And I love it because it's a little smaller neck, you know. Right. Hank Garland and Billy Bird. Right. Yeah, I love they are. Uh, oh. the, the back of the guitar is so beautiful. Sometimes I just want to wear it backwards to show everybody the back of the guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, really? um, so you knew uh, Mosley Mosewright? Because yes. you played the Mosewright guitar? Not too? as well as I could have and should have. Mm -hmm. Because uh, him being in uh, California, mainly in uh, me being uh, east of the Mississippi, all those great guitar players from out west, uh, I didn't get a chance to steal licks from. Yeah. And <laughs> it, uh, but it's, uh, that burden, that's funny you bring that up. It's, yeah. I was talking with Hank Garland uh, right before it came out, and I was with Jimmy Dean, and he was with Eddie Arnold in uh, Washington, and uh, they came up to a club after we got through, and uh, talking, he said, you, that guitar sounds sounds good that you're uh, playing. I think it was a Gibson 225, uh -huh. uh, thin, uh, and it was a good guitar. But he said, uh, Billy and I have come up with a, a deal with Gibson, and uh, we've designed a guitar that I think you'll like. This is like 1956. Mm -hmm. The first one, I think, came out in 1957. And I was in front of the music store with my little stubs. Says, I'm getting a bird land. Wow. I had a, and bought it in Baltimore, of all places. It, uh, the, uh, uh, Fred, he was the Gibson dealer in Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. Well, I sure love the way you, you play that Birdland, and you've done some really innovative things with music and performances, you know, like I love that, that country melody uh, medley that you did with Flip Wilson. He, uh, he, he was really a surprisingly excellent vocalist, you know? Yeah. He's, uh, he was a, a close friend. We did some little off-camera things that uh, we got a kick out of, <laughs> but the world will have to wait. I would love to see that. But I love that, and then I've never seen what you did with Glenn Campbell with the two men playing the same guitar, and that was really amazing because uh, you didn't seem to get in each other's way, and he had everything going on. And uh, the, what was it you told Glenn? You said, don't whisper in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> we did, being as close of friends as we are, and he said, uh, let's do this thing. He said, I've done it a couple of times with, I don't know, a couple other people. And uh, I said, okay, but I said, I get the front. If you're going to play in the back, I get the front. And that in itself made for a, <laughs> a lot of humor. I bet. Yeah, well, that was really great, you know. Two great pickers and uh, friends and really wonderful. And, you know, I, I did a radio show on CBS uh, every morning, 4 o'clock in the morning for f four years. And one of my favorite tracks that I used to play from you was the St. Louis Blues. Wow, yeah. 
uh, every guitar player I've ever known plays the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. Yeah. And th there's organ on the St. Louis Blues. So I'm trying uh, to think. How did you cut that record? Did, was the organ player right there when you did it? Oh, yeah. Do you remember who the organ player was? Yeah, and he was, I think we were on Capitol Records together, which gave us that both labels wanted to, to be part of this uh, this project that they were planning to do, golly, and he was one of the hottest organ players. He was a jazz player. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he got down on it. I love that track. I'll have to get it back and yeah. see what I did. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. One Thank of my you. favorite tracks to play from you. Well, you, you also incorporated a lot of humor into your playing, and it's very entertaining. You took it to all ages, you know. So, I mean, Nobody knows more jokes than Roy Clark. <laughs> Can you lay one on us? Oh, Lord, I don't know. Let me see. Well, that one has to go. I can't tell that. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> oh, they're not bad. They just, some of them, my mother would consider to be naughty. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on cable TV, so, you know, it's not. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe we can get away with it. Right. Let me think about it. Okay. I'm trying to think of one. While you're thinking, I just want to say uh, kudos to you. Congratulations uh, for establishing the Roy Clark Elementary School in Tulsa. Whoa. That's a really beautiful thing. And uh, I know at the school that bears your, your name, there's got to be music in that school, right? Well, it is that. And these kids, somebody said, uh, uh, what's the most honored thing that you have received? And I said, well, uh, there's been a lot of great things that uh, have been bestowed on me. And one of them being the elementary uh, school for the kids in, uh, in Tulsa. And I said, what else can, where can you go and top being uh, around young kids that will be influ influenced by what you uh, are talking to them about? Or that you stand for, and uh, I mean, and they walk up and say, "I go to Roy Clark School." Hey, don't get any better. That's beautiful. Well, I'm sure that you set a lot of kids straight on their way, and uh, well, they've been a big inspiration to so many different generations now. Myself and everybody, you know, Hee Haw was uh, just uh, came into everybody's living room. Yes, it did. You know. And uh, you made everybody smile and brought great music on there. And you had such a range of different guests on there. That was it. Nothing was, we went everywhere from Savvy, Dave, Savvy Dana Davis Jr. to um, Billy Graham to Oral Roberts to uh, everybody wanted to be on the show. Right. They wanted to be on it and be part of it. And so it was an honor for me to to be bumping up shoulders to all of the ones that I admire so much. Well, we do uh, music, travel, and soft news, you know. That's what I say my uh, topics of my show, you know. But mm -hmm, when right. it comes to travel, nobody did more traveling than Roy <laughs> Clark, right? I didn't. I sometimes think back on it and I've, the places I've been and how long it took me to get there. When we started, it was just my wife and I. In a 1957 Ford station wagon, and we went out the first year uh, on travel. My wife and I—I uh, I think it was about—I can't remember the mileage against the time, but we were home. I think the the first year we were home for um, I think about 30 days. Out of a year. Wow. And that doesn't give you a whole lot. Were, were you the driver, Roy? I would drove. Did your wife drive too? She drove. Uh-huh. And then... Uh, Did she keep you awake, the, awake at the wheel? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was what she did. Good driver. Is uh, well, I would sleep. She'd drive. And then we would get to the town that we were going to play. She would... Uh, she'd go in the uh, hotel. Or back then, it was motel. A lot of motels yeah, around, man. and the price was right. <laughs> They're giving me the signal. We gotta wrap it up. Ah. You got a quickie? 
<laughs> he is, but we'd both be off the air come Monday. Roy, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, big honor to meet you and speak with you, and uh, we're looking forward to hear you presenting at the Eagle Awards this afternoon. So, thank you. Uh, you just made my whole trip to Nashville, and we're going to send this out over uh, New York City and streaming all over the world. All right. So uh, before we get out of here, just uh, say uh, one last thing before you say, say bye to us. I did not write St. Louis Blues, but I love to play it. All right. <laughs> I sure love the way you play it. Thanks a lot, Roy Clark, everybody. Thank you. You're the greatest. You're a living legend. Thanks, Roy. It's a beautiful thing being able to beam into the Bay Area on KYOU Radio. Let me just say one last thing before I get out of here, folks. And that is, bye-bye now. <laughs>